Hello everyone, today we are going to learn how to unwrap the UVs, especially in the corner, because if you try with a normal smart UV unwrap, you will see that it creates some seams and also it leaves a bit of a mess in the UV map. That means if you wanted to move the lava from right to left or from left to right, it won't follow the curve, which is not what we want. So we are going to start by unwrapping the wall. Even if you try with a cube projection, for instance, you will see that it doesn't work right as well. So we are going to do the light map uh, back. What it does is it creates quads. It looks awful at the beginning, but now we can select one of those quads and click follow active quads. And you will see that it now looks perfect. So let's then select everything and try to scale it in each axis. So it, you can create some smaller tiles. First in, in Y, so you will see that it's actually inverted, you should rotate it, and then in X. And now you see that in the opposite direction, in the opposite corner, the, the UVs are very small, so what you need to find is where it belongs in the UV map, and scale only this part. But if you were to select only this part in the UV map, you will see that it actually edits all the UVs and it doesn't look right. So what you have to do first is separate this, the whole right column, so you can edit them without influencing the rest of the UVs. The good part here is that they are connected with lava and with the floor, so they are actually sim. So it doesn't matter. So as you can see, they don't affect the rest of the UVs or the rest of the texture when we are moving only this column. So what we're going to do now is try, try to squash this part only without affecting the connected sides. This way it will still be seamless. So like we can see now, it's still not perfectly seamless because we are just scaling in Y uh, part of them. But what we need to do now is bring them all together and close so they keep the same proportions that they had before. And now you can see that it's perfectly seamless and the lava doesn't look so squashed. So now let's repeat the same process with lava. This time, let's start by the smart UV unwrapping. Although you will see that it doesn't work anyway, because the texture is seamless left to right and we have this weird L shape that it goes from, from up to the right. So if you right click and do the full active quads, you will see that it works because you already had one quad. But in case you didn't have those quads and you want to, to do these full active quads with those uh, polygons that are not squared, that they are not exactly a square, you will see that the UVs are completely destroyed, that they're, they're awful. So, Let's learn how to fix one of those polygons and convert it into a quad. So in case you don't have these perfectly made quads already, you can fix it yourself. So you have to scale it in Y, the, the upper and lower points, so they will be aligned in the Y axis. And then let's do the same with the X axis with the, um, each one of the columns. You can do it also instead of scaling it with the um, UV and then align, weld the line and, and align it in X. And then you will see that there already a quad, then you can select everything and keep active this new quad, and then uh, right click and follow active quads and you will see that again you get the same result. Now in case you wanted to move it from right to left, it will follow the curve, but you still have some kind of seams because you don't have enough um, vertices. So let's uh, control R and then you, you can create those loop cuts, and you can now again subdivide this zone here. So we will have more uh, geometry and it will flow much better in the UVs. So now let's select similar, coplanar, and then we make sure that we selected the area that we wanted. And then we can start moving in X axis the, the lava. And you will see that it perfectly follows the curve. But if we wanted to animate it, we would need to go to the shader editor. And then let's, for instance, put the X at zero at the first frame, put an I, I mean press I in the X, and then it will add a, a keyframe. Then we have it a keyframe in a frame 1 and then let's go to the frame 200 and move it about three, 2 or 3 tiles to the right. And then when we shift space to, to play the animation we see that the lava is already flowing. This time we are going to create the material of the wall from scratch and also the displacements of the lava for it to look more realistic. For that we connect the color texture to the principal shader and then we will add a color ramp because it will work as a bump texture. So we connect the output of the color to the color ramp and we see that the white color is referring to the lava and we want the exact opposite but because the white color is the part that is going to be bumped. So we flip the colors and then we connect the output of the color ramp to the height of the bump shader and then we connect it to the to the height, to the normal of the principal shader. Let's adjust now the, the strength so it looks uh, right for your scene. And now we want to add some noise so it doesn't look so straight, the, the bumps it will look a bit more random. 
we, we are going to add also the texture mapping so we, we keep the coordinates that are already unwrapped we, we use them for the noise texture so it doesn't look as weird as now and now we scale it up so the, the noise is smaller and it will create little effects of, of these bumps we connect this with a mix shader and we mix the, the color ramp with this new noise texture and the result is a bit more randomness in the bumps of the wall now let's add the, the displacement to the lava so it looks a bit more realistic and it will look as if it had waves but for that we need to add some extra geometry we will see that if we try to subdivide it now it won't work because we had it to have, we had to subdivide it earlier and it's because we have end guns and the subdivide doesn't work there so we are going to use the knife this time let's create a very thin line next to the, the corner for that we press the K and we keep pressing each one of the edges that are very next to the, the corner and then when we are done with the whole new edge we press enter and then the new uh, full edge will be completed after doing that now we can subdivide because we don't have this problem with the polygons so after subdividing it about 10 times let's select again all the coplanar um, faces and let's put them into a new vertex group so we can apply the displacement only to this part of the of the whole object of the mesh then let's add a modifier a displacement let's add a new texture and this texture will be applied only to the new vertex group that we created the texture will be the clouds which is a very common one for this kind of displacements and if we leave the edit mode we will see that currently it looks awful so we need to adjust these parameters a bit if we change the size of the clouds the waves will have different distance between them and different heights then we can adjust the contrast so the the high as well it will be lowered so we, we can also see the picture in real time and the darker the different the, the more the bigger the contrast between the black and white the higher the waves will be so let's just keep a number that fits for us and we can also play with the strains inside the modifier until it looks just right for us and that will be all so if you don't want to miss any news just subscribe to the channel and see you next time